Hello everyone. Here we are back again. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all show you the uh, 36 inch sheet metal brake that I picked up at Harbor Freight. It's a cheapie but it'll get the job done. I'm going to give you a little sample with some small pieces of sheet metal to show you that you can do Pittsburgh seams on a sheet metal break without a $2,500 or more um, machine. So let's get started. Okay, first thing we're going to have here is I've got a piece of sheet metal and I've marked it because of the size of my shear and convenience. I've marked it an inch and a half from the edge. That's where I'm going to start my first bend. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my sheet metal in up to the mark and I'm going to lock it down. I'm going to bend it just slightly over 90 degrees like so. Then I'm going to pull it out. The arm on my brake is a half inch thick so we're going to go a little bit larger than probably the standard Pittsburgh seam but this one seems to work out pretty well for me. So after we've done the first bend, what I'm going to do is shove it all the way into the crease and lock it down. And I'm going to build the second or bend the second seam all the way up so that we've closed that one. And so far, this is the profile that we have. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is I want to close the profile. See if I can close that a little bit farther by sticking it under here and compressing the seam like so. Okay, so that's what we have so far. Alright, so now the next step is we're going to have to, I'm going to use this as a clamp, so I'm going to just kind of Lock that down in there. And then I'm going to, because I didn't take it much past 90 degrees, it's going to be hard to get started. So I'm, I'm just locking it in here for like a clamp. And I'm going to get, it, get the bin started. Then I can come back and I can go ahead and close this Pittsburgh seam the rest of the way down. Okay, so now, as you can see, I have a rough looking Pittsburgh seam started on this piece of sheet metal with just a break. The next step I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get this to be a little bit flatter, make a little nicer seam. So, I'm going to lock that down just off of where it is three layers thick and I'm going to bend it up just a hair and then I'm going to take the hammer and I'm going to tap it back down until it's flat. Now what we should have is a fairly decent Pittsburgh seam built straight on a sheet metal brake. Uh, now let's build the other part of the seam. All right, so we've got part of the part of the seam made. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another piece of metal just to make it a little more convenient for me. Um, I don't want to waste a lot of sheet metal. I'm just trying to. Show an example that it can be done without fancy equipment. This is a very inexpensive little handbrake. What I'm going to do with this second piece of metal is I'm going to slide it in there just short of my half inch thickness of this metal just to give myself some tolerance. Then I'm going to build, bend this up to a 90. And that should give me the other half of the sheet metal that I'm going to join together. So now I have the one with the Pittsburgh seam 
and I have the one with the 90 degree bend on the end. Okay, so here we have it. We have one piece of metal with the Pittsburgh seam. We have the other piece of metal that has the 90. These two pieces should go together quite nicely. And they do. So there is our Pittsburgh seam assembled but not closed. For this case, just to make it handy, I'm going to put it in here just to have an extra set of hands. I'm going to clamp it in here. And I'm going to start by closing the seam up a little at a time, working it close. Okay, and there we have a completed Pittsburgh seam done with just a hammer and an inexpensive little handbrake. I see I didn't get it totally bent down on the corner there. But there it is, a nice seam done at home very cheaply. Thanks for watching.